and welcome back to Jamie's Happy Art. Today I'm going to talk about what you need just what you need in tools to make paper beads. So it's like paper bead basic 101 um supplies needed, okay? So let me flip you around and show you what you might need to make paper beads, okay? Okay, you guys. In my opinion, what you need is really just the basics of something to roll the beads on, something to cut the paper on, a glue, and a way to store them, and a way to finish them. But, um, that way you can make paper beads, okay? So, let's get started with the basics, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna need paper, okay? And you can use any kind of paper. You can use 12 by 12 sheets of scrapbook paper. You can use smaller pieces of scrapbook paper. You can use um, magazines. I don't have any magazines at the moment. Because as you can probably tell, I'm up at the old schoolhouse recording this. You can use a book, a children's book. I, I personally like children's books. I like the thickness of the paper sometimes. Um, even though it has a sheen on it, you can still use it. You can use little scrap paper to make little beads. So you can use any kind of paper. You can use copy paper you painted. Or you, you, you can take a piece of copy paper and paint it with uh, um, watercolors, markers, crayons. I'm not too sure about because they have a waxy finish. And it might, the glue might not adhere as well to the waxy Crayola fin or the crayon finish. So crayons, I would say maybe not. I have not done. You can use construction paper. You can use the flyer that you get with your coupons in the mail. You can use, I said magazine. You can use any kind of paper. You can even use um, food packaging like cereal boxes, soda boxes. Uh, depending on where, where you're at, um, Coke, pop, whatever you want to call it. You can use all kinds of food packaging, you know, little Debbie snack cake food packaging, any kind of thing. And we'll do videos down the road on this different kinds of paper. Okay. So once you have your paper, you need something to cut it with. Okay. So this is my preference. I use this. You can use... Um, a utility knife to cut it. You can use scissors to cut with. Um, you can use a rotary tool if you're comfortable with a rotary tool. You can use a rotary tool. Um, I'm not comfortable with a rotary tool. And how, if you use, um, a rotary tool, a ca um, case cutter, or a pair of scissors, you could, uh, use a, you could lay your piece of paper out flat and, uh, draw the lines on the paper and cut them that way. So there, there's different things you can cut with. You can use one of those uh, paper cutters, the one that, you know, we tried not to cut our fingertips off when we were kids, uh, finger slicers, I call them. You can use one of those. So you just need something to cut your long strips of paper with, okay? So you just need some sort of cutting tool, okay? That being said, then you need something to roll your beads on you can order online um there's go to etsy's um put in paper bead rolling tool there's a gentleman who sells these um i think they're like 15 to 20 dollars a pack maybe less um he sells them plain or with a rubber thing on it for a right about up here. I like mine plain. So you can use a rolling tool or you can roll your paper on toothpicks, uh, barbecue skewers. You can roll your beads on um, knitting needles because they come in different sizes. Um, with, um, so you just need something to roll them on. If you were, if you had the patience and you didn't squeeze hard. You could even roll them on a coffee um, um, stirrer. 
So there's different ways you can roll your paper. You can roll them on any kind of rounded tool that is the same width at both ends. So like a toothpick is the same, I mean, it's pointed at one end, but basically from in the center, it's all the same. So you just need something to roll the paper on, okay? Then you need something as you're rolling your paper to, to seal the end so that it stays around bead. You need a glue, okay? And you can use kind of any kind of craft glue. Um, this is basic school glue. So you can use white school glue. You can use clear school glue if you have clear. You can use a, uh, okay. You can use a glue stick. This one dried up. I did not know that. So you, you can use a glue stick. You can use, uh, like a tacky glue. Um, the Dollar General actually has a very nice tacky glue that I actually prefer sometimes over aliens here. But my, my go-to glue is just a school glue. I use, um, I get these little tube things from the Dollar Tree and they're refillable. You just unscrew them and refill them. Um, that way I'm dealing with this instead of dealing with this point. It's a much less messy job. So you just need some sort of glue. I've seen many people just use the stick glue and they're very happy with stick glue. So you can use stick glue. I would not use hot glue and I would not use super glue. I wouldn't even use Aileen's. The only one, uh, not Aileen's, um, that other one. Oh, it's in the silver tube. It's clear it's in a silver tube. I can't think of what it's called right this minute. I would not use something like Amazing Goop or I would just use a craft glue. I wouldn't even use a Gorilla Glue. If it's got a super hole bond like a super glue, I would not use it. Um, I'm not saying I would never not use it, but I have not found a need in all these years of me making paper beads. And I've been making paper beads for... The last ooh, seven or ten years. I don't know anymore. I made them as a kid. But as an adult and getting into pa making paper beads, it's only been the last ten-ish years, I guess. I don't know. But you need a glue, okay? Now, as far as, as finishing the bead, I can't necessarily show you um, at the moment because... My bottle is like huge. You can finish your bead in, okay, if you're doing it with a child, my suggestion is to just use clear nail polish if you're doing it with a child. Um, assist a child, but I would, if, well, honestly, I would just put a good coat of, of uh, Elmer's glue on it if I was doing it with kids. I would... Um, Basically, finish the bead off and give it a good maybe two coats of clear school glue if a kid was doing it. If you wanted to take it one step further with children, you could go with the clear nail polish. Um, as for yourself, if you only wanted to do this for fun a little bit, didn't really want to get too involved, I would go get a clear, um, um, like clear spray paint. And I would take my beads outside, lay them over top of something like um, wax paper or something, and spray them with a clear um, with a clear um, spray paint, or string them up on fishing line and spray them with a clear spray paint. That's if I was just doing it because it was a, a something I did every now and then, or I wanted to make a pair an earring or a pair a uh, necklace or earrings kind of to go with an outfit, but you know, I don't really want to hang on to it. Okay. If you want to get a little bit more involved in saving the bead, um, use something like go to the craft store and get something like triple thick or, uh, a clear coat that you can brush on. If you want something a little bit more durable, that would last a little bit longer. But now if you want to get into making your paper beads to sell them, what I use 
is I string my beads up on a fishing line and then I dip my beads in um, PC Petrifier. I buy it by the gallon. Um, once I've dipped my beads in PC Petrifier once or twice, because you really don't need to do it more than twice. And the only reason why I say that is because PC Petrifier is a wood hardener. Paper is made out of wood. The moment you dip your beads in PC Petrifier, you've already put a protective coating on those beads. Where PC Petrifier is, and it, once it's dried, it's not going to absorb. That section is not going to absorb. And the only reason why I do it once or twice is because I flip. Like, I'll dip my beads, let them dry, and then I'll flip them over and re-dip them again. Opposite direction. So, that is why I, um, I do it twice. And then I, you can use a polyurethane or something to then glaze them, put a shine on them. And you can use any type of polyurethane you like. Um, some of it's going to turn the beads yellow, some is not. Um, you can use a high gloss or satin, depending on what kind of gloss you want. So it really depends on you. Um... I prefer to use Verithane. I don't think it smells bad at all. Um, I use the Crystal Gloss Clear. Um, it's hard to find it. I have to get it from Home Depot. I'm sure you can order it online. I've not found it at any of the other hardware stores. So Verithane, it's V-A-R-T-H-A-M-E, is my preference. I have not had it go yellow. I don't think the smell is really bad. And the two products I use, the PC Petrifier and the Verithane, I actually dip in PC Petrifier first. Then I dip in a mixture of the Verithane and PC Petrifier together. Um, and then I dip in the Verithane by itself. So I dip at least three times. PC Petrifier, PC Petrifier, Ver Verithane, and Verithane by itself. And I have found it not to be a bad smell at all. Um, my chihuahua actually has eaten my beads from step one to the finish. She has not died yet. So for some reason she likes the smell of it. And she likes to eat mama's beads. So that being said, that's how I do it. Now, depending on where you live, I... I, I live in Florida. I'll, you know, I have a house in Florida and now I have a place in Kentucky. So I find in Florida because of the humidity, I actually dry my beads in a dehydrator. So that's something I do in between layers to help dry them out to make sure. And I've had no problem, knock on wood, to this day of any kind of mold or mildew issue with my beads. Like I said, knock on wood. I'm not saying, you know, it won't happen, but um, so I think the most important thing is making sure your beads dry. For example, these beads were done yesterday. Um, I don't glaze on, like I said, the toothpick. I only use a toothpick that when I roll my bead, after roll my bead and use Elmer's glue on the tip, I put my bead on the toothpick, let it dry. Now... I let, I know it's only Elmer's glue, but I let them, I usually don't get to stringing them for a day or two, sometimes a week or so. So my beads, you know, I don't immediately string them up on fishing line the moment I take them off the toothpick from using the, the school glue. I just, I let them sit, whatever, and then I would at least let them dry overnight with the school glue and then string them up and then start dipping them. I like to allow... Uh, like if I dip them in the PC Petrifier, I like to allow them to dry overnight. It, to me, it's very important to make sure everything dry is good. Let it all dry good. You, I've had no, like I said, I've had success only, no failures in the dipping process. So that is just the basics of what you need. So you need paper, something to cut paper with, something to roll the paper on, some sort of glue to hold the bead together, and then you need some way to finish it if you're going to finish it. 
That's what you need in paper bead making. So I hope this video helped. Um, if it did, like and subscribe. I'm going to do um, the next video in this series of paper beads is going to actually be a video on rolling up a paper bead. And I know it's basic, but I figured people might like the basics. So if you like the video, like and subscribe. And I will see you in the, see you next time in the next video. Remember, art is creative. So go out and create some art. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.